Um, we are recording, hopefully. Yes. Okay, Miss Davis is not here this morning. Uh, we have special guests with us today. We have uh, our counseling department here with us, and we have a presentation from San Jose State University. Um, I am going to introduce Miss Margaret. I see she is one of our counselors and um, she will speak to you guys for a little bit. All right, welcome everybody. We're so excited to have you here this morning. Um, and today we actually have a special guest from San Jose State University to Hello, discuss- Hello Spartans and future Oops. Spartans. <laughs> Sorry, everybody, um, to talk about the Spartan Eastside Promise Program. Um, and our special guest today is Drew Agbe, and he is the Director of Student Outreach and Recruitment at San Jose St State University. So he'll first kind of discuss the program. He has a presentation for us, and then we'll be able to open it up to questions. Um, so throughout the presentation, you can type your questions into the chat box, and we will do our best to answer as many of them as we can afterwards, um, obviously time permitting. Um, so if you can keep yourselves muted for now, um, and then he'll open it up uh, at the end for questions. All right. And Drew, you have the floor. If, if you wanted to mute the sound of the people entering, there is a little button at the bottom of the participant list where you can just turn that off because I know it's it keeps coming up because people keep coming in. No worries. It's a good crowd, it looks like. So no worries at all. All right. Thank you. So let me go ahead and start sharing my screen. Okay, so here we go. All right, so first off, oh, there we go. All right, uh, so first off, I, I do want to thank you all for taking the time at 9 a.m. on a, I don't even know what today is, Wednesday, because um, I know we're all very busy folks, including the counseling staff uh, at Piedmont Hills. So very much appreciate um, your attention to uh, this presentation. Um, so again, quick introduction. Uh, my name is Drew Agbe, uh, the Director of Student Outreach and Recruitment. And we'll go over, yes, the Spartan Eastside Promise Program. But to be honest, we also want to give you and keep you all up to speed on the great things that are happening at San Jose State. Uh, maybe it's been a while since you and or your family has visited our campus. I think for many of you, you know, you're local and uh, it's maybe been a few years um, but a lot is changing um, for the good, um, and we we do want to get you and your children excited about what's going on at San Jose State on top of this great Spartan Eastside Promise program, which we'll definitely dive into a bit more in detail, because I think there's a lot of information that's out there about the promise. There's a lot of different promise programs uh, that are in the public, but we are specific to uh, the Spartan Eastside Promise program in collaboration with the Eastside uh, District. Um, and so again, uh, Drew Agbe, uh, Director of Student Outreach and Recruitment. I'm also a very proud alumni of SJSU from a long time ago. Uh, so I am a little older, but I'm still proud to be here working as uh, as a staff here at SJSU. Um, and then quick disclaimer, uh, I oversee my staff who runs the program. So I, I wish I could take credit for the phenomenal work that's being done um, in the east side with the schools, but it's actually my staff member here, Miss Amanda Aldama Fernandez, who unfortunately was not able to join uh, this morning. So I'll be representing her, but she actually is the uh, Spartan Eastside Pro uh, Program lead. Uh, for some of you, definitely our counseling staff, you may, might see her in the community. She's a proud alum um, of uh, the east side um, and she loves giving back to the community. So she works tirelessly with this program um, and the students that are coming out of our uh, local community. Um, but I will be uh, presenting on, again, San Jose State as a whole, um, as well as uh, the logistics and details to uh, the Spartan Eastside Promise program. So before we begin, what we uh, cover over this next 30 to 35 minutes, I'll try to get through this so you can uh, ask questions, but I do tend to talk a lot. So if you need to cut me off, please cut me off. Um, but uh, we would definitely will talk uh, about SJSU, maybe some fun facts, uh, campus life, uh, recent rankings, and again, some, some new updates and exciting things happening on our campus. We'll definitely dive into SJSU and CSU minimum requirements. I think it's very key to start with the requirements needed to get into not just uh, the CSU system, all 23 campuses, but how that correlates with San Jose State-specific requirements. And then we'll dive into the phenomenal program 
uh, of that that is the Spartan Eastside Promise uh, that is in collaboration again with uh, the high schools uh, in the district. Okay, and how that benefits uh, your students, but also you as parents. Okay. So let's first break down the CSU system. For those of you who are not familiar, we are the California State University system or part of the CSU. Fun fact, we're the original. We're the first. Um, and so you have 23 campuses within this family. I also like to kind of differentiate us right with the UCs and the private schools within the Cal within California I think when when uh, parents and students are still discovering this whole college process which we know can be quite daunting there is sometimes confusion on a UC Santa Cruz versus a Long Beach State um, a UC Davis versus a Sacramento State or obviously San Jose State so we are part of the California State University system aka Cal State as like as folks like to call us um, and so what are the CSUs known for Definitely it's um, accessibility, right? Again, if you see uh, that we are one of the largest family of campuses um, really in the nation, right? 23 campuses within our system. But what are we truly known for? Definitely accessibility, um, affordability, and access. Um, also the diversity that you will find on our campuses. And San Jose State being your local school, again, I'm sure many of you have visited campus. Um, and so we are a community that represents um, the San Jose community, um, as well as the Bay Area and all throughout California. Uh, but we are extremely hands-on, student-centered, um, and we our philosophy is to prepare students for the workforce after they graduate. Um, some fun facts, again, for those who maybe haven't visited San Jose State in quite a long time, we are growing we are expanding we are university in demand and so we currently have uh, approximately 36,000 plus students on the SJSU campus as we speak um, we just uh, started school this semester and you see our campus bustling uh, very busy with uh, very excited students some nervous ones right which is uh, which is normal uh, for, for new freshmen uh, but we are very excited to bring in what was our largest freshman class um, at least uh, recorded in, in quite a long time. Um, so we have about 36,000 plus students, um, still classroom size, you're still looking about 30 to one. For some of the freshmen coming in, they may have courses that do have 50 to maybe 100 plus, because uh, they're general courses, but the deeper you get into your major, the more you, uh, the more you um, dive into your major program, uh, the more intimate it gets where the students are getting that hands-on experience with their professors and their peers. All right. Um, again, just some uh, some things happening with with uh, with our South Campus. Uh, we have uh, 20 NCAA sports. Um, for those who have not visited our South Campus, we have growing facilities, new facilities for our uh, football and two soccer programs. We just built a um, Spartan Athletic Center that launched literally just a few weeks ago. And again, if you have not visited, uh, we have multiple facilities that have, have been uh, either renovated or added to our South Campus. It adds not only to the experience for uh, the student athletes, but also for students, fans, and the community. So we're very proud of the uh, the growing facilities and our athletic programs down at South Campus. Um, these are just some uh, current rankings happening at San Jose State or us being acknowledged for. Um, again, we're always uh, one of the most diverse campuses um, within the state of California. Um, best value colleges, um, we've been ranked as one of the top public universities in the, uh, on the Western, uh, front of the United States. And then again, those three, uh, those, um, two rankings below, um, were known for a university that, um, that uh, produces students uh, who get great jobs and moves kind of the the social mobility um, of things for their for their families, as well as um, you know giving a education that uh, gives bang for your buck. So we we are one of the universities uh, or acknowledged as a university that uh, that has less debt for our graduates. So again, these are just some some um, some current rankings that that our university has been acknowledged. Um, for those that don't know, we are a comprehensive university. So as your as your sons and your daughters and your children are looking um, at different majors and programs, um, not just across the state of California, but just in general, uh, know that San Jose State, we, we do offer a comprehensive list of over 134 majors and concentrations uh, from different fields. Um, many, many know us as being a university uh, with computer science and engineering and business, um, which are 
are easily our top majors, but we have the arts. We have the performing arts. Uh, we have the social sciences. Uh, we have growing lists of majors um, e every year. Um, some of our unique majors uh, that not too many, not too many uh, prospective students and families know um, that we provide our uh, aviation. We have a film program. We have new uh, majors in data analytics. Um, we again we have music and dance programs that are phenomenal and and quite overlooked at times because again we are known to be the engineering and computer science uh, university uh, but again if you take a look at this list uh, we have um, a comprehensive list of different offerings for your students as they explore what they want to do and what they want to study for their four years as far as resources um you know, we have a plethora of resources for our students, not only obviously to get services, uh, but we want to set them up for success. We want to expose them uh, to different staff members and different, again, resources for them to succeed in their four years um, at San Jose State. This just lists a, a few of our uh, great services from academic advising uh, to um, tutoring centers. Um, we have identity-based uh, cultural centers uh, that have launched just within the last five to seven years. Uh, we have centers for veterans, for athletes, uh, for undocumented students. Uh, we have a, a LGBTQ center, um, a pride center. Um, probably one of my favorite resources to talk about is our career center. Our career center does a phenomenal job uh, posting internships and jobs for students, um, not only as they're about to graduate, but even as they are attending San Jose State as freshmen and sophomores. Um, they can at least get exposed to the different opportunities that exist out there, right? And not just in Silicon Valley, right? Um, and, and it could be as simple as jobs being posted for your students to work on campus, right? Maybe they need an extra job. They want to work um, at Jamba Juice uh, or Panda Express, or maybe they want to work in the student union. Uh, me, myself, our team hires um, at least 15, or at least the goal is to get to 15 to 20 tour guides. Um, so that actually is my office where I hire students to be tour guides. They learn different skills um, and uh, they're exposed to a lot of professional um, opportunities. Um, for student, other students, they want to major, maybe work for the office within their, their uh, course of study. So if they want to work for the engineering department or the kinesiology department, um, there's a lot of opportunities for, for students to be able to work while obviously going to school. Um, and so our career center, again, offers plenty of services, uh, opportunities, um, and, and job fairs as well. So there are job and career fairs for students to either get exposed to the different opportunities out there, but also possibly even land some interviews, um, especially when they are closer to their junior, senior year um, at point of graduation. Um, so again, hundreds of resources that uh, your students may not be aware of coming through the door, but that's our job, right? Our job is to expose them to those opportunities so they're successful um, uh, throughout their four years at San Jose State. Um, and again, I won't go too in depth on the facilities. We always invite parents in the community to come visit campus. Um, we have a lot of new, uh, older, more traditional facilities that we're proud of, but also some of our new uh, facilities um, that are on the horizon. Probably are, and you may see this in the news very soon, if not so already. Uh, but are the launching of our new interdisciplinary science building? We call it the ISB. Uh, it's a brand new science building built from the ground up. It's taken uh, some years. Um, they started. Uh, pre-COVID on the construction of the building, um, and it is uh, almost ready to debut. Um, and so the building is uh, beautiful, very modern with um, state-of-the-art um, classrooms, uh, research um, opportunities, um, and a lot of collaboration with Silicon Valley. Um, and so that, again, is our uh, latest and greatest building that we um, are excited to showcase, not only to the community, but especially for our students uh, within those majors. Um, I won't talk too much about campus housing, although 
Um, we sometimes make the assumption that some students uh, who are local do not want to live in uh, in our facilities, our campus village, but th that is open to apply for your students should you be interested. Uh, we have multiple facilities in housing uh, for students to, to uh, live in. Uh, but again, if, if, if local, um, sometimes it makes the most sense, right, for students to, to, um, to commute from home um, and they can still get obviously that full college experience uh, being local. Um, but that there, this is information in regards to where you can find um, information on the application and dates and deadlines, things of that nature. Okay. All right. So let's dive into freshman admissions requirements. So this is great for you as parents to know, but obviously um, the information uh, should be relayed to the students, whether they're seniors in high school um, or even freshmen. Right. It's never too early to to know what the requirements are for um, the CSU, uh, but specifically for San Jose State being the local CSU uh, campus in your backyard. So uh, just a quick breakdown of the freshman admissions requirements. Again, I'll get a little bit more in depth uh, in the in future slides. So it's a it's really a three step process. I think the, the first thing uh, students and parents and counselors should know is the application period. Um, and so that application period starts, at least for um, if you're trying to apply for fall 2024 or a fall semester, uh, the period to apply um, usually never changes. Obviously, in past years with the pandemic, there may have been some, some extensions, but uh, typically for the CSU, our application period is from October 1st to November 30th. So for, for any senior or any parents of current seniors or rising seniors, um, the application will open up October 1st. The deadline will be November 30th. So that's a two month window um, to apply to San Jose State, either in their primary and or alternate major. Uh, second layer is to determine um, that you're, if your students are what we call CSU minimal uh, admission eligible. OK, so are they meeting the CSU minimum admissions eligibility requirements um, as well as meeting what we call SJSU impaction criteria? I d I'll dive a bit more into impaction um, again in the next couple of slides. And then that third layer in relation to this call or this Zoom for you specifically, because, again, this is uh, strictly for the Eastside Unified High School District. Uh, but then there's the e uh, the uh, Spartan Eastside program uh, where we look at potential eligible students uh, for them to get into San Jose State. You see the minimum requirement there of a 2.75 GPA, right, where if they meet that 2.75 minimum GPA just for this program, uh, but they don't get into, let's say, their primary major. They will still get into San Jose State under what we call undeclared. Okay, so it's almost like giving a student another opportunity to get to San Jose State as long as they're meeting that minimum 2.75. And again, that's just for this Spartan, Spartan Eastside Promise program. Again, I'll go a little bit more in depth uh, if I'm losing you a little bit, right? Because um, I know some of these requirements can get quite confusing. Um, so this next slide will break down just the minimum. Okay, so we'll just talk to the minimum requirements to get us into San Jose State um, and even the CSU system. So the first layer again is to meet the A through G requirements. These are a set of courses um, at Piedmont Hills or any school within the district, right? That's being offered, uh, but there, there are specific subjects and a number of years that students must complete uh, by the end of their senior year, by the end of their senior year. So a quick breakdown of those A through G courses. Um, and again, these must be passed with a C minus or better, must be a C minus or better to be what we call CSU, SJSU eligible, okay? So these courses are two years of a social science four years of English, three years of mathematics, two years of a laboratory science, two years of a language other than English. Then you have one year of visual performing arts and then one year of electives. OK, so that's a quick breakdown on those A through G courses. I can guarantee you that your counselors at Piedmont Hills know these requirements like the back of their hand. They do a phenomenal job. Um, tracking what the requirements are across the board in higher ed uh, uh, in general, but for San Jose State specific and the CSU, uh, they know these requirements very well. Now, the goal is for your students to be aware of these requirements, right? And let me throw this 
kind of quick disclaimer, there is a difference between the requirements to graduate from high school and requirements to be CSU, SJSU eligible, okay? The CSU, SJSU eligibility, right, uh, the minimum requirements are listed here in regards to these courses. So again, two years social science, four years English, three years math, and the list goes on. Let me also reiterate that if you take a look at this list, f the English course requirement is obviously the strictest. So when I'm talking to students and even parents and counselors, there's no ands, ifs, or buts about the English. Four years must be completed. Okay. Uh, math, obviously, there's a little bit of a wi of wiggle room where we require three years, not four. But if they do take four years, that's, I think, um, an advantage for them, not only to just obviously be eligible for SJSU and the CSU, but even for other institutions, right, if they're looking at other um other uh, campuses uh, to apply to. Um, another caveat to the language other than English. So this must be two years of the same language. So if it's one year of Spanish um, and one year of Vietnamese, that will not be considered as being CSU eligible. It must be two years of the same language. So Spanish, Spanish, French, French, or Vietnamese, Vietnamese, right? Two years of the same language, okay? Now, impaction. So as parents, some of you have maybe heard of this term. Others may not, um, and that's perfectly fine. Um, we are considered, meaning San Jose State, we are considered a fully impacted um, university. Now, I think the word on the street or the rumor is if a, if a university is impacted, it means it's impossible to go to that university. And that absolutely is incorrect, right? Um, what impaction truly means is that we are competitive, uh, but that doesn't mean that students will not be able to get into the university. It just means that they must meet a certain criteria. By definition, impaction um, is, um, is a term used for universities that receive more applications than we can accommodate. Now, as far as what San Jose State does is that we are impacted across each program, meaning each major or program, whether it's geography, computer science, social work, or maybe it's art. Each major will have its own specific impaction criteria and or requirements. Okay, but it, once again, impaction does not mean impossible. Um, part of impaction is is meeting what we call meeting and or exceeding what we call a CSU eligibility index. Um, the the uh, acronym is an EI. Okay. Now in the past, we have looked at SAT or ACT test scores as part of our eligibility index assessment. Um, many of you have probably heard that uh, over the past few years, not only the CSU, but UCs no longer require the SAT slash ACT test score. So we are now test blind. Uh, we are not requiring it. Uh, we are looking at other other criteria uh, to assess um, a student's uh, admissibility. Um, lo at the, looking at this slide, you could take a look at, I'd probably skip to number three if you look at number three, the EI formula. Um, in regards to all 23 campuses having their own EI formula, which includes specific supplemental factors. So now that the test scores are no longer required, each CSU campus has their own supplemental factors and criteria on what they look at. Now, the minimum GPA, though, again, this is for the entire CSU system, is a 2.5, 2.5 minimum to be CSU eligible. Now, if you skip down to number two, uh, so my apologies for the the, the order uh, here. Um, the supplemental factors on number two is specific to San Jose State. So San Jose State's um, criteria could be and probably is different than universities like Cal State East Bay, San Francisco State, Long Beach State, San Diego State, etc. For San Jose State, we look at the following factors. Um, is a student uh, first generation? Is a student a son or daughter of a veteran? And or eligible for what we call the Cal State Apply Fee Waiver, which has uh, to do with, uh, with obviously their family income and uh, factors uh, of that nature. Okay. And so those are our are, are specific factors. If you are, if you and or your uh, son and daughter are looking at other CSUs, um, I highly recommend that you either reach out to their outreach office and or jump on their website because their admissions websites will have their specific criteria.
Okay. Um, also, one of the advantages uh, that's also a factor in our assessment of your son and daughter's admissibility here at San Jose State um, is uh, that they are graduating from a local um, high school um, within Santa Clara County. And obviously, P Piedmont Hills is right down uh, our way um, in our backyard where your students or your sons and daughters have the advantage of also getting what we call a local preference in the form of a GPA boost of 0 0.25. So as long as your sons and daughters graduate from Piedmont Hills, they will get a 0 0.25 GPA bump, as I like to call it, in the admissions um, uh, um, uh, evaluation uh, for admissibility by our admissions office, okay? Now, uh, good old Spartan East Side Promise program, why we're all here, right? So um, historically, the Spartan East Side Promise program uh, launched in 2016. Uh, so we are, what, in our seventh year um, of the Spartan East Side Promise program. Um, it is a partnership between uh, the East Side District and SJSU to provide a, a, a pathway to admission. Now, let me have this um, caveat that being part of the east side doesn't mean that students are guaranteed to get into San Jose State just from being from a high school on the east side. I think that might be the, the word on the street, as I like to call it. Obviously, there are still requirements that that student must uh, meet in order to be eligible for the Spartan East Side Promise program. And that is all laid out here. So it is guaranteed provisional admission if the qualified applicant meets not only uh, their their uh, eligibility index, but that minimum 2.75 GPA, okay? So the way it's designed is if a student does not get into their major, their primary major, um, let's say it's computer science or engineering, but they meet that 2.7 GPA, we will look to have that student get into what we call undeclared. OK, undeclared uh, means that that student will have up to about, let's say, two years to declare a major, meet those requirements and get into their major of choice. But coming through the door or as an incoming freshman, they will be um, considered undeclared in their major program. That doesn't mean that they won't be taking courses uh, like everyone else. It just means that they'll be on a pathway um, to graduation. Uh, but within those first two years, also determining what major they will be declaring um, for their for their for the rest of their um, high school career. OK, uh, now part of the promise also um, that's facilitated by Amanda Aldama, my staff member, are additional services, not while they're here at San Jose State, but actually leading up to um, their admission to San Jose State. So again, you will see Amanda um, in the community doing things like workshops, working with your um, working with your uh, counselors uh, to set up um, appointments, um, presentations to not only talk about the Promise program, but also San Jose State admissions and preparing them uh, for admission to San Jose State. We also host uh, Eastside Unified High School District Spartan Summer Program uh, for incoming freshmen who have been admitted. Um, and then again, there's a lot of transition support programs, peer mentors that we that we provide for students to not only, again, learn the, the requirements, uh, but also to get mentoring, right? Um, we all know that the transition from high school to college can be daunting. And so we want to make sure that we're giving information and advice and tips to those incoming students um, as part of the Promise program. Again, so very tailor-made, high-touch, intimate um, services for your students um, because of this Eastside Promise program. And again, shout out to Amanda and her team for always uh, providing this type of uh, these type of services. So again, just a quick summary to break down um, admissions, but also in regards to the Eastside program. Uh, so when applying to admission to San Jose State, uh, your students are applying to a specific major, but because uh, we are impacted, each major has a different EI score. Okay, and so students must meet that eligibility index. Now, if they do not meet Meet that eligibility index and they they meet that 2.75 GPA um, as part of the Spartan East Side Promise program, they will be admitted into undeclared um, and still be enrolled at San Jose State um, as a first time freshman. Um, but on top of that East Side Promise program, um, 
we also give that uh, that 0 0.25 GPA boost, right, in the admissions process. So again, multiple ways, multiple advantages uh, being uh, being a student um, from the east side. As far as the application timeline, um, to reiterate, our application period is from October 1st to November 30th. Uh, we are extremely deadline driven. Um, your counselors know that. And uh, hopefully your students will understand that, uh, unfortunately, we do not give any exceptions to students who apply after November 30th. Uh, some CSUs, um, maybe less impacted, less competitive CSUs may extend their deadline for San Jose State. Um, for the most part, we stick to that November 30th um, application deadline. OK, uh, the only exception in years past, again, was during the covid uh, or during the uh, pandemic. Uh, but um, again, we stick to that November 30th application deadline. Um, as far as financial aid, um, the period is um, it's it's changed a bit uh, for this upcoming year where um, you can apply for financial aid uh, starting in around December. There have been some changes uh, mandated to us by the chancellor's office uh, where financial aid can start around December through April 2nd. Um, as far as what your students should be doing after they apply by November 30th is to check their MySJSU portals for any messages or to-do list items, things of that nature. And then I think the, the, the time where students and parents start to get a bit angst um, on finding out when their students are admitted for us at San Jose State. Typically, it's it's around mid February. Um, the latest you'll find is probably late February, but um, February uh, mid February is is our uh, projected time to admit students, um, and then that would lead then to our May first intent to enroll deadline, where students must commit paying enrollment fee and actually commit to attending San Jose State. Um, and then about a month or so later is when they would uh, be oriented by um, our orientation team where students um, register for classes um, and participate in a two-day mandatory uh, freshman orientation. Um, and that's a bit of a summary of the timeline for your students during this whole process. That's why, again, it's a great time for you all to be learning this, as I'm sure the counselors at Piedmont Hills are starting to have those conversations with your sons and your daughters in regards to what this process will look like specific to San Jose State. Um, but it's a great time to do so um, as they prepare for that October 1st um, opening of the application. These are just some resources uh, that we um, that we provide um, not only to parents, but also students and counselors. Um, so if you'd like to take a screenshot or a photo of this, we can also provide this information in a follow-up email for uh, Margaret and the counseling team to send to you all. Uh, but again, all great resources for you uh, and your students to engage in. Um, a lot of it we covered just within this last um, 35 to 40 minutes. OK, um, just putting this on your radar and actually the counselors probably don't know this yet, but this coming up fall, uh, we are hosting a fall preview day event for the entire campus. Um, it's the first preview day we've done, uh, honestly, uh, even during my time or before my time. And again, I'm old and have been here for a while, uh, but we are hosting a preview day, which um, you can say is, is an open house for students, for you as parents, uh, for your other children, uh, family members, counselors. Uh, this is a free event for your students to pretty much get showcased early, right? What San Jose State has to offer. We'll have workshops by our majors and programs for your students to learn a little bit more about what the majors are, are uh, about and what the opportunities are. We'll have a large scale resource fair, a campus tour, and we'll, we're really wanting to showcase our campus as your students are either uh, applying uh, and or thinking of applying. But I think it's a great opportunity for you as parents, if you have not visited our campus in quite a long time, to see all the great things that are happening um, at SJSU uh, in your backyard. Um, and so again, that date will be Friday, October 27. 
um, registration, all that information is coming soon. Amanda actually is going to uh, be a huge lead and coordinator of this event. So she'll be sending you all registration information, you and your uh, sons and daughters in regards to visiting our campus on Friday, October 27th. I know it's a work day. If you all can take uh, a couple of hours off um, to visit our campus, we would love to see you and welcome you to SJSU. Once again, that is Amanda um, in regards to who you'll, who your students will be working with directly, but you can also reach out to me and my office. Uh, this is our office uh, information. Uh, Margaret and the counselors can, can send you my information um, should you want to reach out to me and or visit campus, but this is our general um, student outreach and recruitment um, office um, department. You can also reach us virtually, meaning your students can set up a virtual one-on-one -on -one appointment or get their questions answered uh, via Zoom uh, and or do it the old school way. I'm pretty old school myself. I prefer in-person. Um, please visit us in our office and or give us a, um, that thing we call the phone uh, where, where you can give us a call as well. But again, multiple ways for you to access us um, um, as well as your uh, sons and your daughters as they want to learn more about San Jose State. State. Okay. Um, and so I think I've talked enough. I told you I can talk forever, uh, but that definitely leaves us um, uh, time uh, for questions. Um, me personally, I like to see folks' faces. So I'll go ahead and take down the presentation. Um, if you have any questions, I would love to try to answer them. Anything specific to the program, the Spartan Eastside Problems program, um, I can I can definitely answer. Uh, but I, I may refer to Amanda reaching back out to you as she she has a lot uh, in store and plans for workshops uh, coming up this fall. So it looks yeah, like I just oh, read a couple yeah. of the parents' yeah. uh, questions on the sidebar here. Sure. Uh, um, we're gonna go in the order. Does the EI formula? use the weighted or unweighted GPA and is it policy for all departments, for example, engineering? Great question. So it is the weighted GPA that we look at uh, from a, and this is very internal kind of admissions um, uh, information, I guess, but obviously we're, we're open to it. It's like we look at 10th and 11th grade A through G courses to calculate in the GPA. Okay, 10th and 11th grade courses weighted to calculate uh, the GPA. Not to say that the freshman courses are not important because we use those freshman courses to meet A through G requirements, right? But as far as the GPA, it's weighted based on 10th and 11th grade A through G courses. Um, the And then for engineering majors, there is a different formula that we use. Obviously, math is weighted a bit heavier. Um, if you ask me uh, if I memorize that formula? The answer is no, but I, we can drop in uh, the admissions website where you can take a look at that, uh, that formula um, that's specific to engineering. And so while I'm answering the other questions, I'll drop our admissions website um, in the chat with that, with that actual formula. Through, can I, can I add something really quick? You mentioned sure. uh, weighted GPA. Um, so our GPAs are not weighted at our, at our site, um, okay. but when reviewing those applications, you will weight those courses when reviewing, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. And just so you want, we have a team of evaluators in our undergraduate admissions office um, that um, that evaluate transcripts, evaluate courses. Um, our team also does what we call final verification, where uh, we're calculating those GPAs, looking at the A through G courses um, and ensuring that students um, are meeting our requirements. And I think I just did right. I drop that in. Yeah, I did just drop in our freshman impaction um, website, but I'll actually drop in the general freshman requirements. Again, um, all that information is in on our very extensive um, admissions website that some folks don't engage with as much, uh, but a lot of great information where you can really dive into to how we practice our admissions here at San Jose State. All right, next question. Can we request slash specify double majors when applying as a freshman? Another great question. I think that's a, anytime someone asks about double majors, that tells me that either the parent and or the student is ambitious. Um, and, and I really like that question. Now, come what I, what I always say is absolutely 100% a student can double major, but coming through the door, as I like to call it, right, applying as a first-time freshman between October 1st and November 30th, just focus on the one primary major, okay? Focus on the one primary 
primary major uh, when applying. Uh, reason being is we, the student will not be able to declare a second major until after they've enrolled at San Jose State. So just an example, if they, if a student wants to do um uh, bachelor's in business administration marketing, but also do a double major in, let's say, Spanish. Um, I would say have the student truly decide on what they what their primary major will be. Let's say it's business. Um, apply as business, meet the admissions requirements, go through that process. Once that student's admitted, right, they are now a business major. Um, at the time that they, and you could say from a timing standpoint, I'd say after they've actually enrolled in their courses um, at freshman orientation, they will have the opportunity to meet with an advisor in that major. So in this situation, let's say Spanish and talk to that advisor on what the process is to declare that second major. Okay. So the second major and declaring that there's a, there's an extra process, but that's after they've enrolled at San Jose state. A uh, same can be said about a minor. Some, some students kind of worry like, Hey, I want to declare my minor. Like now there's no need, right? Focus on the, the, the major at the time of application. Once again, once, once they're enrolled and they're a student, they can speak to that department that they want to minor in. Um, and declare that minor really at any time. The minor is a bit less complex because most minors have five to six classes to, to actually complete one. The double major obviously has its complexities because you're looking at a certain number of courses uh, that they will take to have that second major. So that, that there will be more need to talk to an advisor uh, and finding out what the process is and potential requirements to declare that second major. But uh, again, to circle back for a student, interested in a double major, have them focus on their true primary major first through the admissions process. Great question. Okay. Is there any program for special ed students? So yes, there is. Um, within our College of Education, uh, we also have, we have speech pathology, we have child and adolescent uh, development, which is a, which, which is a great major. Obviously, we have our uh, Bachelor's of Arts in Psychology. So I guess, depending on what uh, what the student wants to do within within that field within special ed, um, you know they're they're. No, I think I think it's the other way around, Drew. I, I'm a student with special ed. I'm a oh, in I'm sorry. Classes. Does that carry over to San Jose State? What I would say is so. It does, meaning we have services and we have our accessibility education center, our AEC, to help support students. Um, and again, plenty of staff um, who are who are who are well versed in, in helping students with with disabilities or in special ed. Okay, thank you. Is the impact index change every year? Mm, great question. Um, I feel like a counselor is asking that question. No, I'm kidding. Um, so the answer is yes. Um, and thank you actually for that. I probably did not mention that, which is very important is um, when you're looking at our admissions website, um, many students, parents, even counselors look at the impaction thresholds um, and they see it and they're like, okay, this is it. It's my, my students uh, eligibility index, according to the website says, and I'm making this up, it's a 3,800 for that major. And they can get set on that and say, all right, uh, Johnny uh, or uh, Dorothy, um, you need to make, meet that 3,800 eligibility index. Uh, the reality is that index is from this previous year. It's the, from the previous year where this new class that just came in two days ago had to meet that index. But those those thresholds can change and probably you know, will change, uh, give or take, from year to year. The great thing, though, is San Jose State, we are extremely transparent with with our eligibility thresholds, where on our website, which I did drop in the chat, you can look at what the thresholds have been for every single major for like literally the last three, four, five years. So you can see the fluctuation of certain majors. Some majors go up, some majors go down, some stay the same. Um, so that is our disclaimer where you could look at our website for fall 2023, which is the most current year, and you could see those indexes, but they could and may change, right, for your uh, son and your daughter as they're applying. And the reason being, and this is very internal information, is that we are meeting the Office of Admissions. We're a bit 
at the mercy, right, of the departments. The departments declare how competitive they want to be, right? And there is this magic formula and and meetings and conversation in regards to how competitive each major is. And so you'll see that some some majors do go up or down and then but many do stay the same. But yes, they they do they can and will and do change from year to year. That's also for the transfer side of things too. So the, our freshman impaction, our, we have also a uh, different transfer impaction, but we say the same thing to our transfer population. Okay, can I um, decide if I do not want to continue with the Spartan Promise, can I cancel it or what is the process to do that? Yeah, I mean, there's no... There's no tr like with the Spartan Eastside Promise program. It, it's not like there's a committed um, participation, um, at least in I guess in this stage of the process where your student will benefit from the admissions criteria, kind of automatically, right? They'll get that zero point two five GPA bump um, if they don't get into their primary major. Let's say it's engineering. Um, but they're still meeting that 2.75, 2 uh, then they'll be put into undeclared. And so I think it's a great question that maybe I need to reword some things, where if you, if your student declares civil engineering, meets civil engineering, they're in, right? There's no, there's no um, you know, the, then the Spartan Eastside Promise Program admissions guarantee kind of is a moot point because they got into their program. As far as the services, again, I think it's, it's a win-win situation, but your students don't need to go to those workshops. I'm sure the counselors are like, no, Drew, don't say that. Right. But, but really Amanda and her staff are there to support your student, give them additional information, work with your counselors, uh, give more intimate one-on-one -on -one, uh, appointments, um, you know, virtually and in person. Um, but there is no true commitment uh, to like either committing or pulling out. Now there, there has been in years past, um, a program or services after they've started San Jose State. Now, um, because of the pandemic, we've kind of halted or have not been able to provide those additional services. But, uh, but Amanda, summer program is technically optional, right? We love for them to, you know, to participate. Um, you know, if we start to bring back the the more retention piece, where we have services for current students. Um, again, we would love for the students to be part of that and to engage in our activities. Uh, but, uh, but again, there's no true commitment to it. Uh, but again, let me put, put in the plug that the more services and support and resources your students, um, have and are communicated to have them take advantage, have them take advantage. The more resources, the better. And that, that's more a plug in my opinion. Go ahead, Margaret. I think you had Sorry, something. I was, I was saying, I think the question is like, are you able to cancel after showing intent to enroll? So that May 1st, I think that's what they're referring to. Um, oh, okay. But I, I'll just say like typically families and students are really only to commit to one um, university by that May 1st deadline. Right. Um, so when you say, are you able to cancel it unless there's some reason why you're ending up not going to a four-year university, um, oh, yeah. May right. 1st deadline is really the deadline where you're selecting one university to commit to. You can't, Correct. You really shouldn't commit to multiple universities at that point because you are essentially paying correct a deposit or something um, by that right. May 1st deadline to show that you are planning to attend that school. So I, I think that was the question, but I'm not, I'm not certain. Okay. No, thanks. For, thank you for that clarity and that additional information for the parents. And then there was a question about undeclared. I, I believe I missed Rupert. Yeah. I want to add a bunch of them together because I think they're very similar. Okay. Um, so I think the questions are if, if I come in undeclared and the major is always impacted how do i go mm. from being undeclared to the major that i want to be in no again excellent question at the end of the day that your student still needs to meet certain requirements to get into their major so if, if the student is admitted as a freshman into undeclared right through the promise for example right. and and just so you all know too some students actually declare undeclared right they they don't have a major coming through the front door they said i want to be undeclared um but in in let's say this scenario where a student is admitted to 
San Jose State didn't get into their primary, got admitted through un, uh, to undeclared. They have two years to declare a major, right? Um, at the end of the day, they still need to meet a specific set of requirements for that major. Um, and then, and each major again has a different has different requirements. So whether it's civil engineering, social work, or music and dance, they will still need to meet with an advisor within that major. That advisor will be very clear on what those requirements are. Um, it could be, and this is just an example, um, a student may need to take four classes and average a 2.8, or it could be take these five classes, average a 3.3. If that student meets those requirements, then they could get into that major. Now, obviously, if they're not meeting those requirements for that specific major, they don't get admitted to that major. Then it could be one of those things where now the student must look at a potential alternate major, right? What are my other choices? So to the question's point, you, the student must still meet that new set of requirements. Now, to add to that, some majors might have a minimum 2.0, right? So, and it might just be a 2.5. Now, if you're looking at our more competitive majors like engineering, um, animation, right? Again, those thresholds are going to be higher. It's going to be much more competitive. And that student still needs to meet those requirements set by the department. I saw a sports okay. question. Uh, yeah, NCAA requirements, are they different than SJSU? They are. So if, um, and I actually used to work in athletics, but I also won't step over my bounds here because obviously if, if a student is being recruited as a division one student athlete, they will want to work with that, that team or with San Jose state's compliance uh, department for them to meet NCAA, you know, admissions requirements. So um, the answer is yes, there are a different set of requirements. What I just covered are the university CSU SJSU requirements. Um, if, if you have questions about NCAA uh, eligibility, I'm sure your counselors are fairly versed as well, but uh, you can always reach out to our NCAA compliance department within San Jose State um, for, the, for those questions. It's been quite a long time since I've worked in athletics, so I will not speak on the NCAA requirements. But yes, there are different set um, of requirements as a recruited student athlete. Okay. Um, okay. Let me... Real quick, I'm trying to get them all in here. Is there a sure. cap? on the amount of kids that qualify for the East side promise every year? The answer is no. Okay. No cap. That's if what the kids say these, right? No cap. CSUs or USC, there is no reason for you to take the SAT or SAT anymore. Yes. So we, we will take there. I want to say there's no reason in order to, to test into a math and or English, we will take, uh, we will look at scores, but we're not requiring it for admissions. It's more for placement purposes. Okay. I actually want to stop there. If, um, everybody has the information we can go through from the counselors. If you need to follow up with Drew and his department. Um, but I want to thank Drew for his time and his amazing presentation. I learned a lot today about the Spartan East, I promise. I hope we all did. Um, Absolutely. Just a little announcement. Next week, uh, Thursday from 6 to 8 o'clock is our back to school night. Um, hope to see you guys there. And next week, uh, Ms. Davis will be back, but we will also have the social workers, and we will be going over uh, our mental wellness um, center, and they will be talking about different strategies to help you with mental health. Um, I appreciate everybody coming for today and thank you for your time. Um, can I get, can I get one, oh, yeah, one, we'll la ahead, one, la one last plug? So I'm not too sure if you all are aware, but there is, um, there is a college fair on what is it? Monday, September 18th. It's the uh, East side uh, mm -hmm. union high school district college fair. Please, uh, please see us uh, at our table. Uh, we will be there in full force. You will meet Amanda. She'll have some also publications on the, on the, on the promise as well as some admissions requirements. So please visit our team. Uh, it's a huge fair, obviously for those who have been part of it. Um, but you'll see different institutions, um, in that, in that facility, but you're going to want to come see us, right? So definitely want to see you become a Spartan and we will have our team there to meet and greet you. Yeah, so thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, thank you for the counselors for uh, helping us get Drew to help us present today. Um, everybody have a good day. I'm going to stop recording now. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, Drew.